Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, if you could please take your seats. It is now my distinct pleasure to bring back to the podium the conference chair of World Export Development Forum 2011, Executive Director of ITC, Mrs. Patricia Francis. Patricia. Thank you very much, uh, Jim. And welcome back. And I'm actually happy to see that we actually have some people in the room, not quite as, as many as, as when we started yesterday. But I think those who are interested are in the room, and this is important. So uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, ministers, I think all things that are good have to come to an end. And today we are about to close the WEDEF. Uh, but I, th I would like to think that this is the first step in our journey towards achieving uh, the goals that you set yourself when you came to the WEDEF, which is looking at how you can, in fact, move sustainable and inclusive tourism development in your countries. At the WEDEF 2010, we ended on a note that said that we needed to think long-term rather than short-term and looking at the profit motive only. I think Professor Lippmann uh, made that point very clear today when he, uh, he really spoke in no uncertain terms about his tribalism and the, that the fact that this vision, uh, of which, which was very, very visible for me, uh, we're seeing in 2050 our grandchildren either freezing or frying. I thought that was rather a vivid picture that if we indeed, not only in tourism but in all of the economic activity that we are thinking about and engaged in, that we do have to think differently about how we do things if we are actually going to get the kind of benefits that we expect. I think we also uh, heard uh, the, the, the big question from the Central African Republic about if I don't have a market, uh, where do I start? Do I build, build it and then they will come? Uh, do I produce supply and then create demand? And I think that this is a big challenge that we have heard and a big question that is being asked by many people. But I think if we listened carefully to the story of Rwanda and the story of Burundi, uh, which were coming out of conflict themselves and the structured approach that they took to actually managing and thinking through how to get from crisis to economic development, then I think that there is a story there which we can follow and which we can understand and learn from. So clearly, uh, clearly when we are uh, looking at this, there is no silver bullet and we do have to think about this in the long term. What therefore is the way uh, we get to, the, uh, to, to where we want to be and get people like the Marriott to invest? Um, well, the Marriott is investing in Rwanda right now, which is, I think, testimony of I'm not sure how many years since the genocide, but you know that is that is a a testimony to show that if you move on a particular path that you can actually have the realization of getting investors of that kind of quality into into your countries but i think that we have to think in a comprehensive way uh, but we should not think in such a comprehensive way that we become totally, totally trapped by um, writing policies and not taking action. So I think we have to think structurally but take action at the same time. And uh, a very important uh, point which was made by uh, Alex is that the persuading government and here the role of the private sector I think is very critical, persuading government to have the right kind of framework in order to allow for 
the financial resources that are coming from taxation to flow back into the areas where investment needs to happen. This is critical and important. So the policies, as well as the investment, the public sector investment, as well as the private sector action, and of course, the community and the people. This is what we've heard over and over again. So I think that uh, we may not have had all the answers to all the questions which you may have had coming into this. And certainly we haven't provided all of the solutions either. But clearly, um, things like the airline industry, which we didn't touch, the, the role of tour operators, how do you build the capacities of your people to meet all of this so that, you know, like this Swiss ambassador, you can actually move from the shoeshine boy to, uh, you know, further up in, 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 the, uh, in the chain? And also, how do, you, how do you ensure that you retain greater levels of earnings in your country? This is all uh, things that were looked at in some of the four workshops, which we actually um, had in, ye on yesterday, in yesterday afternoon's program. So I think um, what I'd like to do now is to, um, is to ask Zaritza from UNWTO to come up and talk a little bit about the partnership which we're trying to put together. And I think one of the challenges of this partnership is to move from a partnership in, on paper to one which is a partnership for action which doesn't create greater levels of bureaucracy but actually delivers for you. And I think this was one of the challenges in when we started the One UN program. And I was very critical um, about the One UN program because I, in fact, thought it was, you know, a bunch of agencies getting together to divide up money rather than finding solutions to what countries actually needed. And I think we have evolved in the One UN way past that now, and certainly I hope that uh, with this new marriage that we're putting together with nine agencies that we will have learnt from our experience in the One UN program. So Zaritza, please come and uh, give us some, some words of wisdom about how we're going to move forward. Thank you, Patricia. I think that many people in the room today um, have been attending and yesterday uh, the WEDEF and uh, the event we organized together from this new alliance. Um, can we put just a slide on the screen? Thank you. I think that um, what we have created uh, with this alliance is really a new response to approach tourism in a very integrated way, trying to optimize the um, strength of each agency and really trying to deliver to the needs of the LDCs. I think that the LDCs are at the heart of uh, the whole action that we want to undertake. Um, as you know, the first meeting was happening in November and we have been able uh, to achieve few milestones so far. Yes. Just to tell you the objectives, what we, uh, the steering committee on, on tourism for development is really uh, an innovative approach, I can say, to the delivering as one. Going beyond delivering as one in a country, but delivering as one in, uh, for a sector. And I think in the new framework that we are leading to, for example, to Rio Plus 20, where we have two themes on the green economy for poverty alleviation and sustainable development, as well as in new, new institutional framework for sustainable development, this second theme really responds. This is maybe one of the responses we can bring on the table for the next global agenda. And the committee is, besides delivering to developing country needs an integrated approach, we want to create new models to measure progress and to see how we can adjust action with uh, the reality of the outputs. I think that mobilization of resources is really a key 
to be able to perform the work we want. And some identify mechanisms are existing today. We intending to like move that as well together. And I think the strength as well is that each and every agency with its specific agenda has the capacity to mobilize and to tap and to have a privileged relation on bilateral basis and on multilateral basis to help the countries to secure the funds. And most importantly, I think, while doing that, and I think this since two days and even the opening, uh, Mr. Ban Ki-moon mentioned tourism in his opening um, remarks. <clears throat> I think that we are on the right time and the momentum is right for tourism really to be uh, understood in its all dimensions. What is our integrated approach? We are currently um, having six agencies that have already started to give consistent inputs in a portfolio we want to build. The portfolio is going to be, um, I can say, the, the Bible of what the services we can offer in an integrated manner. We will have still uh, three agencies that have joined like since a month, a month and a half, UNESCO, UNIDO and UNEP, that will have to input that. And we have so far consolidated about 50 services oriented and I can say articulated in four pillars. In the special event yesterday, we did describe a little bit, I can say, the objectives of each pillar and how they fit together and who will be the leading agencies uh, with no kind of formal way of approaching that. Uh, the portfolio will be ready in about two months time and uh, on the brochures we have circulated uh, outside, I think there is no more, but uh, you can go on the website and they will put there later, uh, the link is already existing. And just the last point I wanted to bring to your attention, I don't think you can really read. Um, <laughs> It's very small, but I just wanted to show you here that together we want to move towards Rio Plus 20 uh, in a, I can say, joint manner with some milestones, uh, with the creation of the committee, with this event as a kind of uh, launch of um, soft launch, because I think the real launch will be when we will be fully fledged and active on the ground. And uh, with the next uh, General Assembly of the World Tourism Organization, we would like to convey a meeting of uh, the countries present and the committee, and as well a few of the milestones with UNCTAD 13 and then leading to Rio. And of course, enhancing it with, um, I can say, the advocacy we want to, to, to undertake with each and respective event like this one, for example, that this year tourism was the team chosen. Um, if you have any question, we have the contact here and you can contact any of the agencies that are uh, part of the team. Um, we all will be very happy to answer your questions and to your needs. Thank you.